Hello everyone, welcome back to the Action RPG lessons. In lesson number two, we'll be looking at adding more classes and objects, and then getting things moving. First, let's add two more classes to make our scene complete. Click on the plus sign beside classes, and here I'm going to add a background class. I'm going to shorten it to BG though. I'm also going to add a class named Bat. This is going to be our first enemy in the game. Let's go ahead and find the sprites for these ones. Open up the Asset Store, and we'll be looking for the Background Field sprite, BG Field. I'm going to name this Field BG short for field background. Next, we're going to look for the bat sprite. And there it is at the top of the screen. There's two different versions of this bat. I'm going to just use this one. Now that we've got our classes and the sprites for them, let's go ahead and add them to our game. Let's start with the background. I'm going to name this background field, and it's going to be that BG class. Next, I'm going to put that sprite on it. So we'll say field.sprite equals sprite, and inside those brackets and apostrophes, we'll say field bg.png. Now if I hit play, we're going to run into a problem. Our player and gem have disappeared. What's happened is that the field is on top of the other two. When Pixelpad adds a new object, it always adds it on top of the other ones. The easiest way to fix this is to write these lines of code before we write these lines of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste these lines before the top ones. You can use Control X to cut, and at the very first line, at the very beginning, we're going to press Enter a couple times to give ourselves some space at the top. In order to paste those lines that we cut, we say Control V. And just like that, we'll have our player and gem back. Next let's add the bat. First we need a name for him. I'm going to call mine Flappy, and he's going to equal a bat class. He needs a sprite, so I'm going to say flappy.sprite equals sprite bat.png. Let's move him up to this dirt patch up at the top left. So first, we need to move him left. We'll say flappy.x equals negative 250. And then we want to move him up. So we need a positive y. We'll say equals 200. There he is. I'm also going to add one more gem on the right side of the screen. So before I make the bat, I'm going to add another gem. I'm going to name this one Shiny, and it's also going to be a gem class. We can reuse the same class as many times as we want. We just have to set it up the same way, but give it a different name. It's also going to use that same yellow gem sprite. And if I want it to go to the right side of the screen, I need to give it a positive X. And I'll make it go a little bit up too, so a positive Y. There it is. So we've created a nice picture for our game, but how do we get it moving? Well, for that, we'll have to look inside the loop. 
Let's make the bat move right across the screen. Now I'm going to put in some code in the loop and something is going to go wrong. I'll explain what happens when we get there. So inside the loop, if I want Flappy to move to the right, I have to be always increasing his x value. So first, we tell the computer which object we're going to be modifying here. It's going to be Flappy. And then what aspect we're going to be modifying, that's his x value. And then we want to increase that number. So I'm going to use a plus equals 1. So every time the loop runs, it's going to be adding 1 to Flappy's x. Now the loop runs about 60 times per second. So after one second, Flappy's x value will be 60 more than it was in the last second. So if I hit stop and play, it's not going to work yet. And let's see what happens. Here we are. We're getting an error in the console saying Flappy is not defined in the loop. Well, remember when I said the start and the loop are completely separate pieces of code? Well, there's a certain way we need to write stuff in order to link them together and have them work. Whenever we create an object in the start that we want to modify in the loop, we have to write self dot before each line. So every time we have a flappy object, we have to put a self dot in front of it. We also have to put that self dot in the loop. And just like that, Flappy will start flying across the screen. So how do we make him fly faster? Well, we just increase his x value by a bigger amount. Let's say 3. Look, he's much faster. How about 10? Wow, he's zooming. If you want to make him move to the left, you can say minus equals 10. And there he goes. I'm going to set this back to plus equals, and I'm going to say he moves at a speed of 2. There we go. That looks great. Now you'll quickly notice that he moves off the screen. What we can do is change the size of objects. In order to make things bigger, we want to change their scale. Let's start with the background. Here, I'm going to modify the field, and I'm going to be modifying its scale x, so how big it is from left to right. Now the scale always starts at the number 1. That's its normal scale. If we want to make it bigger, we have to use a number bigger than 1. If you want to make it smaller, we have to use a decimal. Let me show you an example. If I use the number 2, I'm going to be making the scale x twice as big. Look at that. And if I use the number 0 0.5, that's going to be half the size, and it gets shrunk. Let's go back to that number 2. That was a good size. We should also make it taller. So I'm going to say field.scale y, and I'm going to say that's equal to 1.5. Looking good. But that also makes our other objects look tiny. Now instead of writing these lines all the time, let me show you a trick we can do. Let's go into the player class and change his size. When we're inside a specific class, we don't use the name we gave it inside our game. Instead, we use the word self. So if I want to change the player's scale x, I say self.scaleX. And if I use the number 2, I'm going to make them twice as big. And we want to do the same thing for the y. 
And look at that, much better. Go ahead and add these two lines to the gem and the bat as well. If you want to make them bigger or smaller, that's up to you. And now that we've converted our picture into a movie, the next step is making it into a game. We'll look at that in lesson three. I'll see you there.